Hi, this is Tim at Watches and Wonders. We are with you, Lee Snorden. Now, this is a model you will recognize from SIHH 2018, but it is, in fact, a new debut within the Freak Vision family. So, what's new? Let's start from the outside and work our way in. Blackened titanium, the titanium being the first instance of a base metal available on the Freak Vision. The watch, which incorporates many of the underlying technologies from 2017's InnoVision. Let's get close. Okay, the UN250 movement is essentially one and the same as the baguette hours hand. You can see the flow of power through a silicon drivetrain to a constant escapement. Now this is significant because it represents an economized variant of a constant force escapement. As the 50 to 55 hour power reserve draws down, the elasticity of silicon is used as a essential quantized impulse to the balance. So only a certain amount is quantized and distributed to the balance as the elastic band snaps. It has an inflection point at which it will take over and snap as it's impulsed. And it's that snap and not the force from the drivetrain that actually impulses the balance. Thus, it works like a remontoire de galette in that it is effectively a spring that separates the mainspring from the balance. Now let's get a little bit closer because there's crazy technology in here. You can see Luis Nardin's own balance wheel executed in silicon. You can see the escapement executed in silicon. All of this completely unlubricated to enhance short-term timing precision and remove long-term maintenance requirements, which after all are mostly dictated by lubricated components. Now you'll note some of the style incorporated is highly individual as untreated, undyed corundum, that is sapphire in its natural clear form is used to comprise the train jewels. You'll also note underneath you have the hour hand, you have the minute hand, you have a small amount of luminova, and then laterally you feature a track. It's not a tourbillon and it has never been a tourbillon. It is a carousel, a system invented in the late 19th century that is more suitable for a wristwatch application as it features a different powertrain driving the escapement and the baguette movement. Therefore, you can actually, you can actually set the watch, you can turn the baguette movement. I'm going to demonstrate this now with the, a freak. You lift the lock at six o'clock and then you turn to set the time. So this is something you can do with a carousel that you cannot do with a tourbillon. Notice how the escapement continues to beat away because it has a separate powertrain. If I were to try to turn a mechanism with only a tourbillon, I would crash the escapement and damage it. Now turn the watch over. You can see this is a prototype, early series, 45 millimeters as ever, 22 joules, Ulysse Norden caliber 250. And you're looking at the extravagant grinder winding system. This is a winding system unlike any other. It energizes the UN250, it pivots on 22 joules. It looks like anything but a winding system as the rotor is almost completely hidden. It's a thin, fine, and efficient Paul-based winding system that helps to energize this power-hungry timepiece. A combination of silicon and traditional mechanical engineering, the best of the new and the old. This is the 2.5 Hertz Freak Vision, now available in black DLC titanium. Hey, this is Tim at Watches and Wonders, and we are with you, Lee Snorden. We're looking at the new 2019 Freak X. This is a pace setter in many ways. The first ever Freak with a conventional crown. The model you see here, 43 millimeters in carbonium, might be the most distinctive. Now you can see in the form of the original Ulysse Norden marine chronometers, you do have an individual number plaque on the flank. This one being a prototype, but the watch is representative. Now the timepiece has an extraordinary machined carbon fiber case. And you can see this is a, a UD carbon fiber matrix, effectively a block of carbon composite and resin that's then machined into the form of the case. This is the middle child in the collection with the entry level watch in titanium approximately 21,000 US dollars, carbonium approximately 24,000, and then rose gold at about 30,000. You have the classical baguette hand with the movement arrayed from the center to the escapement to the balance. All of these components, let's get super close created in-house by Ulysse Norden through its accessory, Sigatech, a subsidiary that provides silicon components. Ulysse Norden is able to render silicon in-house, meaning it is not dependent on the Swatch Group Rolex Patek Philippe development program 
that provides the remainder of the industry with silicon hairsprings. The timepiece, effectively amagnetic thanks to its silicon component, also operating without lubrication on its escapement for long wearing durability. Note the use of clear sapphires rather than colored sapphires and a free sprung balance for precise manipulation and adjustment. You can see the dial has wonderful depth, it is fully loomed, and in contrast to past freaks, this is a fairly water resistant watch with 50 meter water resistance. You can see that right on the case back. Ulysse Nord N Caliber 230, it is an automatic winding three day power reserve. We only saw the first automatic winding Ulysse Nord N Freak last year with the Freak Vision. That watch costs $100,000. This one considerably more accessible. So this is the Carbonium, and this is the Titanium. You can see a slightly and only slightly more traditional aesthetic. This watch also features the signature Ulysse Norden blue tones on its metallic dial. You'll also appreciate the fact that the watch offers more of a contrast between bezel and case. Note the use of a dramatic box section sapphire profile. One of the undersold advantages of the Freak X is that sapphire, which is dramatically cambered. Not a cheap piece to specify, but a dramatic and worthwhile piece in the flesh. This is the Ulysse Norden Freak X, new for 2019 at Watches and Wonders. Hi, this is Tim at Watches and Wonders 2019 with Ulysse Norden. We are looking at the Executive Skeleton X. Now, this is a fascinating piece on a couple of levels. First, because it's wearable. In carbonium, which is essentially a carbon fiber matrix the watch is very light and at 42 millimeters it's very wearable the idea was to have a shape inside a shape inside a shape as the UN folks tell me and we're gonna get a little close and you can see externally it's a circle in board they actually have the image of the X that thrusts straight through the center and then you have a rectangle horizontally oriented at the center of the dial. The dial has remarkable depth. As you can see, what appear to be applique indices actually continue seamlessly into the center dial around the corners where the X form is created. The dial is a bewildering array of textures, tones, colors, and even focal planes as you look through this watch rather than at it. Now, I will say this, for a skeleton, nay, open dial, it is remarkably legible. I have no trouble telling where the hands are. The darkening of the hands is effective. The implementation of loom allows it to stand out, not just at night, but also in the day. Now the watch features a manual wind caliber, 21 joules, with a four day power reserve, so 96 hours, free sprung balance, beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. Yuli Snorden makes the hairspring, they make the escapement, they make the balance, all of this done in-house. Turning it over, you can see that it is effectively an open movement as the barrel and the train down to the escapement allow you to trace the path of power from the keyless works at the crown to the barrel, through the train, to the silicon escapement, and into the balance itself and the motion of the balance. Now the watch is 50 meters water resistant. It features a characteristic Ulysse Norden flanking number plate. And perhaps my favorite feature here is the implementation of actual gold in the carbon matrix. Carbonium is an interesting material because contrary to my earlier belief, it's not actually machined, it's molded. So it is molded and then it is autoclaved to stabilize it, the resin and the carbon fibers becoming one and essentially freezing into this shape. Uh, the carbonium, however, can be mixed with gold. And so gold is added at the tail end of the process just before the molding. Getting real close to the bezel, you can see there's actual gold molded into the fibers of the bezel. And this is gold carbonium, a hybrid, this is a two-tone that I can absolutely support. This is the Ulysse Norden Executive Skeleton X in Carbonium, and I've got it right next door in Titanium. As you can see, a very different aesthetic. This watch, a little bit more about the gray scales and the Ulysse Norden Signature Blue. Both of the watches sensational, and as you can see, both of the watches wonderfully wearable thanks to a inverse ducktail profile to the lugs themselves. Also, I appreciate straps fixed with screws in this day and age. The motion and movement to end spring bars starts right here. Ulysse Norden, Skeleton X from the Executive Collection for 2019.